Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday of a holiday week. And just we're between Happy New Year and Little Christmas. So things are still rather festive. But people are highly emotional because we had all that stuff with the full moon and the meteors and all that stuff over Christmas. And a lot of people had some extraordinary fun. Deb, have you recovered yet? Um, I no, but I... I had a thoroughly enjoyable time. I had good friends over, as you well know, and we had lots of fun. But yeah, we uh, got to eat really good. <laughs> we ate good. We played good. Yeah. Um, so and I shared, shared responsibility for the holiday, and we really had a good time. But yeah, you know, like all of you know, it's planning, and you know, and it's a commitment when you're going to be entertaining people. So, and I'm still entertaining people. <laughs> You have family, family, family this weekend. God bless you. Yes. Okay. Too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a sarcastic phrase, a listening ear, an honest compliment, or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. That was from our friend Leo Buscalia, who started being popular actually in the early 60s before most of you were born. <laughs> Anyhow, he was early. He was a um, professor of psychology at Berkeley in California, and he was considered to be quite a bit ahead of his time relative to teaching people positive reinforcement, positive identification of actions, and very much about hugging and touching. And of course, it was very timely with all the hippies. Mm -hmm. But love, Leo. And Deb and I were talking about this one this morning. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, um, to ditch the resolution. So many people make the New Year's Day all about making resolutions. And truthfully, this year, I didn't. Um, but this, this slide is really apropos because it says to resolve means to find a solution to a problem. And we are not a problem. Nope, you're not a problem. So the way you uh, showed for your life, the past year was necessary for your growth. Mm -hmm. Now is the time to just reflect, to learn, to accept the lesson, to create an intention, a positive call to a shift that would make you happier, mm -hmm. a spark of magic plus manifestation rooted in self-love and backed with action. One of the things Deb and I both got to observe over the last couple of weeks was people's dependence on being happy on someone else's actions and then being very disappointed. And while we watched it happen, I said to Deb in a very unkind way, look, that person doesn't understand they're responsible for their own happiness. They're mad because the other person didn't please them. Right. So... Yeah, our expectations of what, you know, what we expect from others is sometimes they're not able to do for us. And um, that creates a lot of uh, animosity in certain social situations. Right. And then when you go home, you don't like yourself because you were not happy with the person who misbehaved, quote unquote, or you judged yourself to be somehow inadequate. So then you compound your discomfort with harsh judgment. So that's why we're having this mental anguish. And it's about your emotions being disturbed and how you have tools at your fingertips that can help you identify and move through a situation. Right. This time of year, we have to talk about diet because that's the number one thing people swear they're going to change. Oh my gosh. It's like, that's probably the number one resolution on most people's list. Absolutely. And but remember, it's a bad cycle. <laughs> well, it usually leads to emotional disturbance at a deeper level because of the word diet. Right. Diet means you're dying. You're punishing yourself. You're changing things because your favorite dress doesn't fit anymore. Your favorite yoga pants don't want to stretch anymore. Whatever the excuse is, you feel motivated that you need to make a change rather than just say, 
my lifestyle in the last three months has caused my clothes to shrink. So I must adjust my lifestyle so I am happier with the tightness of my clothes. Yeah, you mean you just can't blame it on the dryer? Well, my dryer does do some damage sometimes. <laughs> not as much that causes a new size. Oh, my gosh. No, no, no. But, you know, if we change diet to healthier lifestyle, it makes it much more appealing. And just so you understand, it is a circle that's self-defeating. That's why I say throw away resolutions because you're not broken. Right. You already are a wonderful, functional, fun, loving human being. And if you want to make a change, then tell yourself it's a lifestyle change that you will be happier with who or what you're doing differently three months from now. Mm -hmm. Give yourself time. Right, and you wanna do it in a smart way. And Sue and I have taught, talked very often about how to make those proper changes, food changes, lifestyle changes, you know, with meal planning and exercising and things like that. Because when you do some of these drastic plans that are coming out in the new year, Within one or two weeks, you're causing a deficiency in your body that really creates, as we're saying, another emotional disturbance. You get really frustrated, you give in to temptations, and now you're you're only compounding the initial um, issues for what you wanted to change. So be very aware of what you're doing and, and, and how, how that process is. Because after the deficiency, then we go through another part of the cycle. Right, guilt. You got to understand Satan, the dark force, Voldemort, whatever word you want to use. If you believe there's a center of goodness in the universe, then you got to understand the balance that was created means there's a dark side. So the dark side guys right there in your your ear playing back for you any previous self-criticism. And I love that Star Trek adventure where they discover that laughter and fun and lightness defeats the darkness because yeah. that's the truth. If you're busy looking to criticize yourself, looking for a reason to feel bad, then even if you change your lifestyle or you eliminate that 10 pounds or whatever it was you thought you were going to do, it's still not going to bring you content. Men. Right. And what else happens? You put the weight back on, right, Deb? Well, yeah, because then you're like, you, you're feeling hopeless. You feel like you failed. You didn't meet your goals. Then you give up. And then the weight comes back on. And it often comes back on a lot faster than it came off. Right. And, and you got to like yourself. Right. You have to commit to movement. You have to commit to 20-minute walks. You mm -hmm. need to commit to deep breathing, to drinking water. If you want to love yourself, you have to take care of yourselves. Right. I love doTERRA because since the beginning, they've clearly understood that for the last 50 years, a lot of the medical research that has been publicized on all of these diseases, it goes right back to an abundance of inflammation in your body and your brain. Mm -hmm. Inflammation is a normal response to some things that happen in your body. Your inflammatory response takes care of cuts and bruises and mobilizes the lymphatic system for you. When you have a serious shock, it's your adrenals that kick out all this different chemistry and it causes an inflammatory response so that fight or flight can take place. Mm -hmm. Everything is interconnected. The inflammation levels we're talking about though, and that's what they run blood work for to see where your inflammation level is, and it gives you a rating. Some physicians now just look at the blood chemistry and say, well, you really have got cardiovascular disease. You really have arthritis. You really are showing a predisposition to neurological dysfunction, but it's really based on your infl inflammation. You mm -hmm. have the ability to control inflammation. You have the ability to reduce inflammation and to keep it reduced you can have a lifestyle that permits indulgence on weekends and the rest of the week you avoid carbs and white sugar white flour alcohol 
and give your body a rest. You have those choices to make. When you also have a high inflammatory response, it's not listed on here, but it's one of the things as a psychologist and worked with other physicians, they tell me the emotional state is dramatically affected by the inflammatory response. Yes. doTERRA's gift to us is the lifelong vitality, the PB assist, and the full range of amazing oils that if you use these things consistently will reduce your chronic inflammation. So you will be reducing the opportunity for these diseases to take hold and to make your life really miserable. Right. When you think of these diseases, I break the word up differently and I think of dis-ease. And a lot of our emotional triggers cause stress and, and uneasiness or dis-ease. And it does um, cause these problems to become more enhanced. So um, using the oils to make yourself feel better, to address those conditions can be really helpful in reducing this inflammation. Oh, absolutely. Eliminate the nesting. People are always saying to me, well, how does, how does our cells get heated up? How does this happen? I mean, yeah, I have a Hershey bar once in a while. Or they'll tell me, no, I wouldn't eat that because it's got paraffin in it. But I could be known to eat other kinds of chocolate, Godiva, Dr. Raz, you know, the hand-rolled, really rich chocolate. But if you take a piece of rotten fruit and place it inside perfectly good fruit beside it, what happens? The mold from the rotten fruit moves and it ends up hurting the good fruit. Mm -hmm. The same thing that happens in your system, the more often you feed, whether it's sugar or stress or dehydration, constipation, all of these things cause an inflammatory response. Your body begins to think you like being inflamed. It mm -hmm. thinks you like having this kind of congestion. So you can have perfectly healthy cells right next to the ones that have a lot of candida, right next to the ones that are congested. And guess what? It just got multiplied. Yes. Yeah, because you've set your body up to spread those conditions from cell to cell. Yep. Now, remember, we're back on thinking about our vicious cycle. So remember that when you start that diet where it's a form of restriction and feelings occur, being, being good anxiety about following your plan properly. So even though your outcome one, you want a positive outcome, a lot of the attempts to make it happen quote, result in more anxiety. And then emotionally and physically, your needs lead to an inability to restrict yourself. And then, then you binge or overeat, then you get feelings of guilt and remorse, the fear of your weight gain, then your, your actions, you get in control by dieting or restricting again. So you are on this vicious roller coaster and it is controlling our feelings, our emotions. So we are suffering from an emotional disturbance. Not only that, but the more we obsess, the more we concentrate. Oh no, I can't have that because I'm on a diet. Oh, I can't have that because I'm on a diet. Oh, I'm gonna have just one bite and oh my God, I ate the whole cookie. When you are obsessing, when you are constantly focused on weight, it's not going to go away. It's impossible. The law of attraction says what you focus on is what you hold in place. That's why we discourage gossip. We discourage negative self-talk. We yeah. encourage you to find virtues. Because if you're focusing on virtues, if you expect wonderful things to happen, and you put some action behind your words, amazing things take place. Mm -hmm. and you have grapefruit's on special, isn't it? Or is it coming it, free? No, the, yeah, it's, a, it's the freebie this month, yes. Okay, order your 200 PV before the 15th, so you get the free grapefruit, and you get the free frankincense. It is such a deal. It is. 
And I these <laughs> oils directly can impact elimination of the cells that are holding the fat. Mm -hmm. Great lemon sassy, fennel, on guard blend, turmeric, green mandarin, pink pepper. I forgot to put pink pepper there. All of those will contribute to your eliminating the fat cells you don't want there anymore. And take a few more steps. Go out for 10 more minutes of a walk every day. You will be amazed at how your body reshapes. Dun, da, da, da. Yes. People the always... system. <laughs> how does this work? I know. This is how it works. Okay. One of my favorite things is to take Melissa, put it on my left thumb, set my intention to free my brain from negative thinking, negative judgment, whatever else is going around me. I put the Melissa right on the roof of my mouth. And when I do that, what am I doing, Deb? You're having, you're affecting your, your system because the Melissa is actually traveling up in through your nasal cavity and your olfactory system, even though you put it in your mouth and it's going to help your brain. Right, your hypothalamus, your thalamus, your pituitary, your amygdala, all of these parts are affected by what you put in your mouth. Now, what else do we have in our mouth that can be either a slayer or a healer? That would be our tongue. So when we say bad things like, oh, that was stupid. Oh, God, I can't believe you were that dumb. What are your cells hearing? What are your cells feeling when you are judging yourself or others harshly? And sometimes it's automatic. Sometimes it's a bad habit. Deb was telling me this morning, she went through a period of time where she had bad habits like that. Oh, sure. You just replay old things that you've heard over and over again. It sticks with you and it's like a broken record. And the minute that something goes wrong, you're, you're beating yourself up. It takes a really, a lot of con concerted effort to break that pattern, but it's worth it. It really right. is worth it. And the minute you recognize you are harshly judging someone else, understand you have not been nurturing yourself. There's a direct correlation between your being unhappy and wanting to think bad things about others and genuinely not being happy with who you are. So take your cedar wood, put it right in your forehead, take that bergamot, put it right in the back of your neck, mix in there some frankincense, have some sandalwood, yarrow pomegranate, I put it right in the bridge of my nose, clean up my senses. You state clearly what it is you want things to do and you will be amazed at how things shift. Yeah, and the use of the oils really does help you concentrate on making positive, more positive affirmations and focusing on your virtues. So that's really something that you want to do as you're using those oils. State those positive intentions. If you can't think of something on your own, read one from one of the cards. You know, read read a book, sayings, anything. Yeah, we had a friend uh, told us just before the holidays that after 40 years of marriage, she and her husband were separating. And we just listened, and the next thing out of her mouth was, well, we haven't really loved each other for a long time. And out of my mouth came, but are you happier with yourself now that you've made this decision? And that had not occurred to her. All she said was, I just need relief from the stress of him being with me. And I said, okay, then you must be happier with yourself because you made this decision. It's really important you know what you want and what you need and that those are two different things. Mm -hmm. Try not to confuse attachment with love. Attachment is about fear and dependency and has more to do with love of self than love of another. People laugh when I tell them I read passages from the Bible every day. I do. I happen to really respect the Bible as a source of inspiration. I love the Old Testament stories, the heroes. I love the lives of the saints. I love them celebrating virtues. I find that inspiring. Other people don't really care about that book. I do. But you have to do like what Deb said. You have to keep phrases around. You have to choose what it is you want to dwell on. 
Uh Love without attachment is the purest love because it isn't about what others can give you because you're empty. It is about what you can give others because you're already full. Uh You need to think about that for a minute. Here's a blend that will help you having clarity about what is a want and what is a need. In the next couple of weeks, Deb and I are putting a couple webinars together to do with hormones. And the other one's going to be doing what we call bullet journaling. It's the latest thing now to help people rummage through their old bucket of bad feelings and express them just so they can examine how important is that to me. Right. The process to identify that you're full of love instead of what you feel you are missing or your shortcomings are. Right. I feel that especially at this time of the year, people get on like a bandwagon with what other people are doing and they want to be like them and they look at them and like, oh, look how happy they are. Then I'm going to do it too. And that's a really hard thing to keep yourself from falling into that that bad habit because what makes one person happy isn't what makes yourself happy so again the focus has to be on ourselves and what what makes us feel good absolutely I love this phrase go sell crazy somewhere else we're all stocked up here (laughs) when you're with friends or relatives or a group at work and they're going wah 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 Oh, everything is terrible. Oh, everything is no fun. Use the brain flush. Use Arborvitae with the yarrow pomegranate. Put it on the bones behind your ears. Put it on the back of your neck. And just choose differently. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be quiet, but you can leave the room. Your non-participation will be a bigger contribution than you could possibly imagine. And it'll make everybody else wonder what you're doing. (laughs) Yes. You could be the one they talk about when you're out. That's right. I love this one. This is really cute. If I get fat, I eat too much. If I lose weight, I'm sick. If I dress well, I'm showing off. And if I dress simply, I'm poor. If I cry, I am pitied. And if I speak my mind, I am arrogant. Isn't it the truth? It really is the truth. I find people do that. You know, if you are losing weight, you know, people do say, oh, what's wrong with you? What's, you know, what, what's going on? So again, forget what other people are criticizing for or judging you on. Just be yourself. Be happy with who you are. Right. In fact, nowadays, no matter what you do, someone's always going to criticize you. So you might just as well be yourself. That's Mm -hmm. bad. Self-nurturing, the self-appreciation. I mean, I know that I have virtues that other people look at and go like, wow, I wish I could have that. And he went, no, you don't, because it's based on where I came from. Virtues often develop for survival. Virtues often get danced out because you needed to know you had that. Mm-hmm. And I love the green mandarin and the magnolia to help you filter the information that may come to you from the world. Like the TV they used to sell everybody on being a size double zero mm-hmm. or magazines, the advertising, all those commercials that say everybody should have a new Lincoln or a new Lexus. doesn't matter what your income is. You look really cool. Who cares? Can you reach the pedal in the car? Are you comfortable? Do you have good visibility? Can you be safe? It doesn't matter what others are saying. In fact, when others are criticizing you, you could have compassion for them because it's what I just said. Mm-hmm. If they're spending time criticizing, they're unhappy with themselves. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that bit about the car. I actually do have a friend that bought a car based on a friend of hers that had the car. The car never fit her right. She couldn't reach the pedals or the brake or the gas pedal. and she was shorter than the other friend and she had to push the seat up so far that the steering wheel was digging into her. So really, I'm I'm honestly telling you the truth. So um, it was just never a car that you're going to love to ride in when you're so uncomfortable. So please make a decision on your own for your own good. 
See, if we're up to me, I would be driving a bright yellow checker cab, okay? Because it has a big back seat, a great trunk, and a really wonderful Chevy engine. But they don't make them anymore, okay? Yeah. So, you know, that, that sucker would drive on for 400,000 miles. Great car, good frame, very safe. But like I said, they don't make them anymore. I love Magnolia. I just wanted to give you this little tip because people forget. They use lavender. They think of lavender for calming. When you need more calming or more self-appreciation, go right to the Magnolia. The Magnolia touch, it's a good thing. It is diluted because the Magnolia fragrance of just the pure Magnolia oil can be so overwhelming you wouldn't like it. Remember the days back when doTERRA used to let us earn jasmine for sponsoring yes. so many people? I got to buy lots of jasmine from people who didn't like it because they didn't understand it was intended for blending. It was intended to use with other things. So they didn't like the fragrance. So I got to buy it from people. And that way I had lots of jasmine for blending. The Magnolia is perfect. It calms you down. It's perfect for children. It's perfect for seniors who are confused and dehydrated. While you're having them drink water, put the Magnolia on them and calm them down. Help their blood pressure come down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do like this. This was a very interesting find this year. Um, I love the smell. I don't think I would like it pure. As you said, it is a very intense fragrance, but I love magnolia with frankincense or with one of my citrus oils. And I really do enjoy that smell and it does make you feel really great. All right. And artists often feel alone in this world. Magnolia inspires expansion of the creative heart and helping artists accept that it's their unique perspective that makes them feel alone, but their ability to connect to the center of all creativity to express the things the rest of us have inside that we don't know how to express. So it's a really good one if you have an artist friend. Great. When manifesting, because people say to me all the time, well, how do you make that happen? Well, what are you focused on? I'm focused on drawing really good, helpful, talented people to us in all of our adventures. I am focused on when we travel to Australia, everyone can find this funny location that we have chosen for a really fun class. Manifesting, you must always make present positive statements. Deb and I have talked to you about this before, that if you want to say I am debt free, you don't use the bad word debt. You say, I am enjoying the expansion of my savings account. I am enjoying the raining down of money from me, from so many opportunities that present themselves. How are you going to get out of debt? You're going to get out of debt with discipline. Stop going to Starbucks four times a, a day. Make your own coffee at home. You understand what I'm saying? When you make a positive statement about, I enjoy the expansion of my bank account, you are going to suddenly make good priority decisions to honor that. Plus, your opportunities will show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, another thing is to meditate on what you want. Really think about it. Make that forefront in your thoughts. Um, I love it. You want to see it, smell it, feel it, hear it. Uh, you want to live what your, what your thoughts are, what you want to have happen. And if it's real in your brain, it's moved from wish and oh gosh, and maybe I could earn that. No, if it's real in your brain, it will be real in the physical. Okay, so if mm -hmm. you say I have too much fat over and over again, what are you going to change? Nothing. So if you say I thoroughly enjoy how good I feel after exercising, which is true. Okay. Sure. We don't think about the start of exercise. We focus on how good we feel when we complete our 20 minute scurry around the lake. Okay. You focus on success, and it is real. Important to say things like, I release all things from the past year that have caused any negative attachment. So if you're attached to that last 10 pounds that caused tightness, 
guess what will happen? Is it going to stick to you? And it might even grow friends. Oh, no. I am open to receiving new changes, new lessons, new adventures. I say that all the time because I'm sometimes I'm tired of making the same mistakes. Obviously, I didn't get that lesson. Please let me have the lesson gently so I can understand it. Mm -hmm. I welcome new opportunities to learn and grow emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Frankincense, pink pepper, green mandarin, and turmeric with fractionated coconut oil are amazing for erasing our false beliefs and allowing us through our lessons to rewrite what's important for us, what's genuinely important for us. Mm -hmm. And understanding our own struggle of sorting that out, we will be less harsh on our family and friends. I promise. <laughs> They'll appreciate that. <laughs> Science buffs. Here's another chart. Yeah. Metabolism means the conversion of nutrients into energy and building materials to meet your body's needs. So when we say things like Percy's kisses are empty calories that are a burden, what I'm saying to you is there is no nutritional value whatsoever in Hershey's chocolate. Stop it. Get right. the dark chocolate. Get the other kind of chocolate that actually has some health benefits. Mm -hmm. It will be satisfying if you tell yourself you love it. And this is to remind me to tell everybody, yes, Deb and I have been working on the hormone presentation. We mm -hmm. were just you recover from Christmas before we explain to you how really efficient your body is if you give it a chance. And again, you see all the places you apply oils behind your ears. It's going to affect your pituitary, your hypothalamus. On yep. your throat, it's going to dramatically affect your thyroid and parathyroid. Mm -hmm. All these things secrete hormones that are necessary for calcium absorption. And calcium is important. Why, Deb? Because it keeps your, it helps your bones. It helps the spaces between your bones. Our calcium goes to our brain first, as Sue just re-explains to me today. And um, when we don't take enough in, um, it draws it away from our bones. And, and a lot of people then can suffer from um, osteoporosis and things like that. So it's really important that we have enough calcium in our body for our brain and our bones. Right, and when we do the aroma touch technique on the back, you're dramatically affecting the adrenals and the kidneys and the pancreas. Everything is connected. Right. You can't put chocolate in your mouth and say, okay, this is going to be okay for everything except my ovaries. My ovaries don't get any chocolate. No, everything <laughs> affects everything else. Sadly, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice? I could say, oh, except for my hips. We don't want any of this on my hips wrong right and don't forget the thalamus you always tell everyone to tap on your chest yes you know, that tapping into place whales there and it, it does help our thymus which helps uh prevent us from getting diseases so yes neurotransmitters you hear that word tossed around a lot there's a lot of neurological diseases right now being diagnosed renamed subchaptered and renamed so all you need to understand, and we will explain this in our hormone presentation, is to keep your oxytocin levels high. That keeps so many parts of your brain happy. When your brain is happy, you defeat almost everything else that can hurt you. Mm -hmm. So indulge in getting massages. Have the aroma touch technique shared. Art projects. We Deb came up with the idea of we were going to do an art project at Christmas Eve at her house, and it was great fun. And we oh. all decorated in our own way these magical Christmas bulbs. It was really fun, very satisfying, and it helps other parts of your body feel good. Mm -hmm. Dancing. We all turn up the music and dance around the house, and nobody's looking. Right, guys? I know I do. <laughs> And I try not to complain later if the muscles hurt, okay? Mm -hmm. Gar Debbie is really good at growing things and making them bloom. I am not. 
I admire Debbie's work. Saying things out loud about other people's virtues is very good for your oxytocin. Singing. Yeah. Humming. And, uh, we did the singing and the humming. Remember, we did the karaoke. It was it's great. And even if you're not a good singer, you don't have a good voice, it's so much fun. And really, what an increase. I mean, we laughed. We we had so much fun. And you really do feel better after something that simple. Oh, my gosh, yes. We all had a good time. Even though I can't sing, I was going, la, 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 la. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> we had great fun. Um, people who are gifted with playing musical instruments, like our friend Tanisa. She yes. plays harp. God bless her. You know, what a wonderful gift. Speak the virtues, visit beauty, go visit flowers. Even in the winter, everybody has an indoor botanical garden somewhere. Go find it. Music that stirs you. Mm -hmm. Have colorful experience. Go see Chihuly in Seattle. If you're bored, get on a plane, go to Seattle. They have this huge multiple building installation that is so healing. Mm -hmm. Debbie found us a drive through color light display in New Jersey that was amazing. Oh, that was fun. It was. Is it yeah. nature and notice it? Don't be thinking about tomorrow. Bring yourself into present moment. Mm -hmm. All of these things that increase oxytocin, hugging increases oxytocin, being close to people, having honest exchanges, all increases your oxytocin level, which is the happy neurotransmitter great please remember your whole body's connected your thoughts are things they don't stay in your brain they make cells that are substandard if you're thinking bad thoughts we call it stinking thinking knock it off <laughs> keep your body well hydrated do your 20 minute walks Make sure you're eliminating all the dupa dupa that's sitting there. And one of the ways you can do that is with consistent exercise, balanced eating and supplements, um, gentle changes. I don't recommend radical changes. If you're going to give up something, only give up one thing, especially orally. So if you're going to give up carbs, give them up consistently. If you're going to quit smoking, don't try to quit carbs and sugar at the same time. Not good. Only do one oral thing at a time. Mm -hmm. um, remember, medication pathways touch every part of your body. you got to clean out the debris. If you are thriving because you have found medication that works for you, that's great. But all medication leaves debris your body doesn't know what to do with. So you need to increase water. It doesn't matter what you're taking. Right. Unless you're on dialysis and then they tell you how many fluids you can have and you must listen to your doctor. Right. And you want to make sure that you're listening to your body, being aware of, of how it feels. Um, state your affirmations with your oil applications and your intentions are expressed when you're applying those oils. And that those certainly help your whole body stay connected. Okay, we can't go to lunch with Sally Berkowitz. She loves mushrooms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can't forget about forgiveness, okay? Many of us are being hidden, hindered from our destiny because we are being held hostage by a leash around our souls called unforgiveness. Dr. Dave Stoyer, uh, has been doing tons of research on the brain. He's an extraordinary physician who became an oral surgeon who discovered he had a brain tumor who sold his oral surgeon practice that was involved with essential oils and moved to Utah where they were actually doing research on brain tumors. He's now working on his third PhD or fourth, Deb, I forgot already. I'm not sure, but yeah. He certainly he has, has many of them. Multiple PhDs. And he said he has determined with his research and in working with physicians around the world, the number one reason people get ill is because of lack of forgiveness. He just brought it down to one category. I thought it was lack of compassion, but that really is covered with lack of forgiveness because we have to have compassion for ourselves first. 
So Dr. Dave recommends two drops of frankincense, two drops of grapefruit, and two drops of kabaiba every morning and every night to help our brains process forgiveness more quickly. He said it takes the sharp edge off of our feeling justified to withhold love from somebody. And he's just brilliant and he's so genuine that, you know, you got to just try it because what the hell, what if it works, right? Of course. Okay. You can experience forgiveness through using marjoram, wild orange, patchouli, lemongrass, and cypress. Use any of those oils on your forearms when you have to encounter someone you don't feel you can forgive. For your brain to help you with that, try Dr. Sawyer's rec recommendation. The frankincense, grapefruit, and kabiba, two drops under the tongue of each. And he just does a cold turkey. We don't mess with these sissy. He calls them sissy capsules. <laughs> but most people that have been doing that have really um, shared what a wonderful uh, difference in their body that that just using those drops has really made a big difference. So it's worth yes. a try. Now you'll notice your handout looks just like this because after convention, people kept writing to us and saying, well, what can we use? What can we use? What can we use? What can we use? Okay. You, this is what you can use and it works great. And two people bragged that they didn't change their eating habits whatsoever and they still lost inches. Right. Then I had to tell them the truth that that meant that those inches were already lost. They just hadn't moved around enough. The oh. oils moved out. Okay. Okay. So I'm gentle walking with using the Mito 2 Max, two before breakfast, two before lunch, and use all of these oils in a capsule. You will love it. Oh, yeah. Pink pepper, black pepper, yarrow, palm, and turmeric. What a great... What a great blend. Just two drops each twice a day, and um, it's really going to help trigger that weight loss. Everyone has been documenting what a wonderful experience this has been. Like they said they haven't changed their eating habits, but um, it's working for them. Yes. Um, these are just tools to support the miracle that is your human body. The, this particular recipe has been reported for many quarters that it works. So if you're looking for a recipe to support the changes you want to make, please understand fixing your mental anguish is first. Mm -hmm. What will really help is what, Deb? Well, we got to give ourselves permission to be happy, to be peaceful, to be enthusiastic, to be appreciative. And to learn lessons without criticizing ourselves harshly. The thing is, if you wake up in the morning and say, I choose to accept the amazing, wonderful surprises that are going to happen today, you're going to draw to yourself amazing, wonderful surprises. Right. I keep oil blends right by my bed. I put them on before I get out of bed while I'm thanking the universe for getting through another, you know, another night here on the earth. And I give myself permission to thoroughly enjoy the good things that are going to happen. Mm -hmm. The reason you want to give yourself permission to do that is because so many people have been suffering from assigned attitudes and feelings from others. Of course. So please give yourself permission to be content and to say thank you for everything that happens. Mm-hmm. And this is where we talk a little bit about how we can fall into old habits. Right. Never let a stumble in the road be the end of the journey. And Sue and I have talked about this many times. You know, we have a planned intention to, to maybe create a healthier lifestyle. Well, it was Judy's birthday and she brought in these delicious treats and everyone was enjoying themselves and you felt left out. So you gave in and had one. Okay. Enjoy it. You had it. You know, enjoy the pleasure of eating it. Don't give up. Don't spoil it now. Just get right back and do what you're supposed to be doing. And so many of us give up so easily and like, oh, well, all right, I'll try again next week. Nope. Don't let that little stumble hurt you. Just keep pursuing your journey. Right. Because 
it's one decision at a time that you like yourself better. Mm -hmm. So you give yourself enough to indulge and enjoy like everyone else. And now the next decision is no ice cream tonight because you already indulged and you are happy with that and you don't need another reward. Mm -hmm. You make the decisions inside your head. But adjusting your parameters is fine as long as you still have your eye on the goal and it's reasonable and you are holding you accountable. Don't say, oh, I was over at her house. She made me eat all that pasta. Yeah, I'm sure she did. She took the fork and shoved it in. No, you can eat half and take the other half home. Eat less, walk more. You will love yourself. And while you're walking, list all your virtues. If you have trouble remembering all of yours, remember the reasons that you got married. Remember the virtues you have in common with your spouse and your family members. List virtues. I call it going for a virtue walk. You can do this. Apply your oils. State your intention. Give yourself permission to enjoy the beauty around you. And just manage you. Yay. We would like to thank you guys for joining us today. We hope we've been helpful. One lady wrote to us the other day and said, I'm so upset. I spent too much money at Christmas again. And I said, well, that's great because you recognized something you don't want to do. So now you can set new goals. And she went, oh. I said, don't sit around and feel bad. Okay, you did it. It seemed like a good idea at the time. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to plan differently for next year. Right. So she was able to forgive herself and move on rather than angst over, well, I can't have any Starbucks this week because i got to save all my money to pay my bills. No. Give yourself credit for recognizing, yep, this is why I need to change my habits, and I can do it one decision at a time. Right. Well, that's it. One decision, one moment, one hour, one minute sometimes, but that's okay as long as we keep pursuing our goals. Right. We'd like to thank you for joining us today. Thank and you, you, sir. You can write to Deb at... Happy Cal, H A P P Y C A L 359 at gmail.com. Yay! Thank you for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Have, Have a good weekend. Is it coming watch. up again? <laughs> yes, and watch for the